Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Planetary science tells a tale of our solar system's origins and evolution over the course of billions of years. Random impacts from space, wind and water erosion, earthquakes, and volcanism are thought to have shaped planets and moons over eons of time. But do these processes fully explain what we actually see on planetary surfaces? The Electric Universe Theory offers entirely new pathways for understanding our solar system's history. The chief principles of the Thunderbolts Project argue that planets and moons have not evolved in peaceful isolation over eons of time. Rather, as recently as several thousand years ago, planets in the inner solar system moved chaotically with near collisions producing violent electrical discharges, massively scarring planetary surfaces. For many years, this hypothesis has been tested in laboratory experiments, and it's now clear that countless familiar planetary features can be reproduced through electrical discharges. At the forthcoming Thunderbolts Conference, Future Science, taking place August 17th to 20th in Phoenix, Arizona, Guest speaker Garrett Hill will discuss his research into the role of electric fields in nature and the laboratory. Today, in part one of a two-part presentation, Garrett will explore what he and his team have learned in their investigation into electrical geological processes. With this presentation around electrical scarring, you know, early on, our company had noticed a lot of really interesting patterns coming out of some of our experiments and when we would expose certain materials to electric fields or magnetic fields or RF or any complex field input, we would experience sort of a deformation in the material itself or, or sort of a precipitation of the atmospheric materials that, that were sort of in the general proximity and we'd see movement, we'd see entrainment of particulate matter, we'd see ionization of, of different types and pressure differentials implying that it was moving air, sort of creating sort of um, an acceleration in, in certain gases and so on. And we we're just exploring all of these different effects to create this plasma reformer technology so that we could provide better, more effective solutions for emissions control and, and making in the internal combustion engine more efficient. So these patterns and effects that we're experiencing started to really remind us of things that we've seen in famous photos from Hubble and, and different telescopes around the world. And, and it, was, it was really clear that they sort of mimicked what we could see as far as topological features on planetary bodies or moons or even comets. The depressions that were on the surfaces of these bodies it, it all seemed to relate at our scale, our laboratory scale. And so I started taking a lot of the multimedia from our experiments and started correlating them to the images around planetary terrains and started seeing that they're similar in geometry, the similar in patterns and some and a lot of the times colors, even topographical relations, you know, aspect ratios from height to diameter of some of these, they just, they just all look very similar. It looks like we were replicating millions and millions of years of geomorphology in the blink of an eye. In these experiments, in this presentation, we use a base plate, a dielectric plate, which is, which is acrylic, about a quarter inch thick. We use particulate matter, uh, carbon particulate matter, which is graphitic in nature, and the, the small-scale structure of it, is, it comprises nanospheres, com concentric nanospheres. And so graphitic carbon, uh, or graphite, is actually showing up recently in scientific news outlets around the potential of, say, Venus having had a high concentration of, of graphite in its crust which would give rise to the low reflectance material that is hard for scientists to measure in these sort of hollows or these depressions on the surface of the planet and may have given rise to the high percentage uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the event that there were sputtering involved that not only excavated all of these hollows and these depressions because they can't find the material and they don't have a coherent theory around it, so all three of those issues 
the scarring and the, the excavation of the material, high percentage carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere, and the low reflectance material, all alluding to high content of graphite. It was exciting to us because we had a lot of this stuff laying around. We work with the diesel engine and we sort of harvest this soot and we keep it and do experiments with it. We took this particular matter, we put it on top of the acrylic plate, placed that combination of materials on top of a Tesla coil. And then I would grab a conductor while the Tesla coil was on and bring it close to the soot mound. And then from there, electric, electric fields would start uh, arranging the patterns you see in these photos. And then when I would get in really close proximity with that conductor, an arc discharge would happen and, and generate a path of least resistance. And on this Mauna Loa example, you can see the center where there was there's cracks happening. You have this spontaneous alignment and discharge patterns happening all over the place in various geometries and, and shapes that look very similar to the structures on the surface of that volcano. On our own moon, Planetary scientists suggest that radial streaks associated with craters, called ray systems, are the result of ejecta being thrown out during the formation of an impact crater. However, as demonstrated in Garrett's research, the same features can be produced electrically. Trying to reconcile the theory, um, which seemed it was like it was just the easiest thing that they could come up with, which is an impact, and then the material being injected out it doesn't seem like they've done full accounting on all that material. They supposedly was ejected away from that center point. And likewise, not all ray systems are straight out from the center. And so you do get like interference patterns and certain patterns that look very similar to these experiments. Perpendicularly arranged trails relative to that center point. And I haven't found a good coherent theory around that at all, except for the possibility of an electrical discharge providing that. As simple as it is, just the fact that it's a striking similarity in, the, in just the geometry and the pattern of these experiments to these different ray systems, I'm really excited about it. On the planet Mars, unusual layering patterns are sometimes attributed to a process called cyclic bedding which is thought to occur due to long-term changes in regional climate over millions or even hundreds of millions of years. But can electrical discharges produce these same features almost instantaneously? Related to the time scales, the experiment took about 10 seconds, I think. What I also wanted to include in this specific slide was pinches, because you, also you see these formations of these sort of pinch patterns that they could relate to an electric field inside of these different layer ge layer geometries and regions of the surface of Mars that, that have an abundance of these types of patterns. And in the experiment two photo at the top, you can kind of see a pinch point there. The similarities in the geometry and, and shading, even interesting enough, the, the, the way in which the, the material piled to create the illusion of a shadow was interesting in certain parts of these layers in the experiment. Funny enough, I've made the Olympus Mons picture black and white and, and changed the colors a little bit and tried to see if people could guess which was which. And curious enough, I've, I've gotten people that would say that the bottom one was, was Olympus Mons. But with this experiment, this was one of the first soot mound experiments on top of the acrylic glass, on top of a Tesla coil with a close proximity uh, conductor. And this was about eighth of an inch thick. And once I brought the conductor close to the, to the center of the soot mound, it quickly started to heat up the acrylic so much that it started to bubble in the center. And at first, I wasn't expecting that, so I... I, I had a knee-jerk reaction to stop, and then I immediately thought, like, wow, you know, this is starting to provide sort of an analog to the circular patterns and sort of impact-like depressions or excavation zones that would happen in the center of, of volcano. And so, so I just kept the conductor there for a little bit and allowed that to develop and it was like a seven second experiment and this really kind of earmarked the beginning of these kinds of experiments and and realized that there's just so much to explore with the hellas basin uh, it's an impact basin located in the southern hemisphere this is really close 
photo of that particular zone, but there's a lot of viscous like structures in that in that area that look like there was either fluid in that region for a period of time that had circulation patterns that that either formed this over a long period of time or in one fail swoop the electrodynamic of converging fields produce some shearing and sort of arrange this material. But but some of the patterns that we see in our experiments, you know, the top picture being a quartz insulator from one of our plasma reformers while running inside of the exhaust stream of a of a diesel engine was was producing a lot of these interesting fluid patterns. And so not to say that these patterns look exactly like the the Mars patterns on this slide, but to show that fluid dynamic patterns, you know, can spur from some of these experiments. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.